This morning, I, I know, don't be distracted by the shoes that you see here on your left and on your right. I, a couple of weeks ago when I was preparing, trying to prepare for this week's service, there was one day I was seated there and, and the Lord just told me, put shoes on the stairs. I said, huh? God, what do you mean put shoes on the stairs? He said, put shoes on the stairs. I said, what do you want me to preach about? And this morning, I don't know how many of you have brought your children or you have seen on the billboard this show called The BFG. Have you all seen the show The BFG? Anybody has seen the show BFG? It's a roll down story. Yeah, some of you, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. It's this, is this a story? The BFG stands for the Big Friendly Giant. Okay, the Big Friendly Giant. But today, we're not talking about any giants. We're not talking about any monsters. We're not talking about anything of that sort. But today, the title of my sermon is called The BFC. Okay, the BFC. What does the BFC stand for? Today, I pray in each and every one of us that we'll be the BFCs, which are the Beautiful Feet Christian. The Beautiful Feet Christian. So the Lord gave me this verse, and I said, God, why you give me this verse? You know, this is not a missions convention. Usually, a missions convention only we will preach this verse, you know. So we, he asked us to turn to Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, 14 to 15. Let's read the Word of God together. One, two, three. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is in season all the time. Your word, oh God, is a word of truth. I pray that God, your word today will guide us in all truth. Your word will move us to action. Your word, oh God, will seep deep into our spirit so that we can become the person you desire for us to be. Change us, oh God. Lord, anointing come upon your speaker and upon the hearer of your word that God, it, will, it might bring conviction and com and, and Lord, accomplish all that is sent forth to do. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All God's people say, Amen. All right. Beautiful feet, Christians. Let's talk a little bit about your feet. Feet. Let's have some feet facts. Feet facts. Do you know that our feet will carry us equivalent of five times around the earth in an average lifespan? Yet, we barely pay any attention to them. When was the last time you looked at your feet and said, Wow, look, how beautiful are you? When, when was the last time you took, it, you, you took good care of it and gave it a good scrub? You know, sometimes, you know, you look at your feet, you're like, Wow, so far away, I cannot even reach them anymore. You know, and, uh, and you watch. I know when you're pregnant, you know, you can't even see your feet. Where? Feet? Where? Where? You know, and you have to have people helping you to, to, to cut and do manicure, pedicures for you. But most of us don't really pay much attention to our feet. We've got calluses, we've got, you know, all this dried skin and, and we don't really pay much attention. Cutting our toenails also is a feat. Correct? And yet, the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet? Do you consider your feet to be beautiful? You can say a beautiful face, you can say beautiful heads, beautiful hair, but beautiful feet? If you ask, apparently, if you ask doctors how important feet are, doctors have known for thousands of years that feet are actually mirrors of our health. Many times, signs of diabetes, arthritis, circulatory, and neurological diseases often appear first in our feet. That's what they say. Okay, then the foot consists of 26 bones, 26 bones, all of which are vital to balancing the body and giving the body the ability to walk. Have you ever thought about how one foot problem can literally make your life that much more miserable or difficult. Corns, bunions, athlete's foot, gout, ingrown toenails, turf toe. Turf toe is a condition where your big toe is pushed upward so badly in a bad impact, you know, and it causes injury to the, to the big toe, turf toe. And uh, heel spurs, stress fractures, and can literally put you in a wheelchair. Did you know that if you were to lose just one little toe on one foot, that you would, have to, you would have to learn how to walk 
all over again because it's that important. Every part of your body is that important. Every part, even the littlest of toe plays a role. You can lose balance, you know, if you lose one toe and you can lose balance and you have to learn how to walk all over again. So, say now, just say, thank God. Thank God I have ten toes. Thank God I can balance properly. Just begin to thank God for every single part of you is perfectly made and God has, has placed them all in place. You know, I, I remember the time when I was pregnant with my, my son. Three weeks before I was about to deliver, my, my hero of a husband went, goes mountain biking. Okay, he went on biking and he came back with an injury. Okay, he came back with an injury, he went to see the doctor. I brought him to the doctor and there were two fractures on his ankle. So he had to be put in a cast for three months. Three months he was in a cast and I was heavily pregnant. And uh, so time came for me to deliver my child and he dropped me and I went to the, to the room, the labour room myself and he went to park his car. As he was coming to the labour room on his crutches, yeah, the nurses go, ah, Sir, are you in the right ward? Uh, because, you know, I, this is labour ward, you know. He said, yeah, yeah, my wife is in the labour room. So he comes to the labour room and I'm like, okay, you're not going to deliver already, you know. And the uh, doctor goes, uh, sir, you, I think you sit there like in the corner. You sit in the corner because one patient enough, you know, because I want to attend to your wife. I don't want, you know, if you fall or anything, I cannot take care of you, you know. So he was sitting in the corner. So you see, you watch those movies, right, where the wives are hold on to the to the husband, you know, and grip them until, until blood comes out of the, the, the hand, bluff one. I never held my husband's hand. I was holding on to the bar for dear life and while my husband was sitting in the corner. And when I was screaming, ah, ah, and he was just sitting there. But that's not the end of the story. The next day, I was getting discharged. So the hospital attendant comes with a wheelchair. He looks at him. He looks at me. He looks at him again, I go, Abagi dia duduk lah. <laughs> Let him sit down. So, my husband ended up to be on the wheelchair and, and, uh, and, and the baby was on him and I was holding the bags and I was walking out. And it was such an awkward moment in the lift because it was so funny. He was trying not to laugh because he was pushing my husband on the wheelchair and with the baby on him. It was, it was really hilarious. But really, our foot, <laughs> our legs are so, so important. That little fracture, that two fractures there had caused so much inconvenience. Can anyone guess what is the number one cause of foot problems? Number one cause of foot problems. Can anyone guess? The number one cause of foot problem is wearing shoes that don't fit properly. Wearing shoes that don't fit properly is the number one foot cause, cause for, the, for, for foot problems. You know, we, we sometimes look at shoes and we're like, wow, cheap, lah, cheap, you know, cheap. Never mind, it doesn't fit, so never mind, this looks cheap, you know. It's, it's, it's so cheap, cannot, cannot take it, how can I not buy it? It's so cheap, you know. It doesn't fit, it, uh, one size bigger, one size smaller, half size bigger. We still buy it because it looks good, ma. You know, how can we miss the deal? But yet, it's so detrimental to our foot if we don't wear the right right shoes that fit us, don't wear the right size that fit us. So it's very important that you buy right shoes, all right? Now, the Bible talks about beautiful feet. Beautiful feet. Beautiful feet because we are wearing beautiful shoes. Beautiful feet because we spend a lot of time on pedicures. The Hebrew word for beautiful is naha. Naha. Naha, and it does not mean pretty or cute. It means befitting, becoming, perfectly appropriate use as design, perfectly fitting. It is what God had in mind for our feet. When they go into the world, when your feet go into the world of men and women with the message of good news, the peace and the peace of God, God calls them beautiful. It is not the external beauty of our feet that is recognized. It is the beauty of the message we bear, both in our words and in our actions, that speaks, to the, that speaks of the love of God for people as they say we walk the talk. Beautiful feet. This is what the Bible talks about, about your feet being beautiful. So today, do you have beautiful feet? Do you have beautiful feet? 
Are your feet bringing you to places where you can share about God's love in your actions and in your deeds? Because that's what God, God deems as beautiful feet. This morning, let me, sh- let me share with you a few traits of beautiful feet. Beautiful feet traits. How to have beautiful feet is not to go and dip it in Epsom salt and do scrubs. But you want to have beautiful feet as the Bible deems it beautiful, as God deems it beautiful, is firstly, you must be willing to go. You must be willing to go. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? They need to hear. People need to hear. This means that something, someone needs to tell them. Sometimes telling them means that you have to do something, get to their doorsteps perhaps. You have to go to them. You have to do something so that in order that they will be able to hear. Beautiful feet are those the feet that are willing to walk the roads of second miles, are able to make detours, are able to stop and say, how are you? These are beautiful feet. Last week, Pastor Julie preached a powerful message on the armour of God. The armour of God, we want the whole armour of God in, on us because we want the armour of God for protection. We want to fight the good fight of faith. But the armour of God includes, as Ephesians 6.15 says, with feet that are fitted with the readiness that comes from a gospel of peace. With feet that are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You and I have been fitted. We, are, we want the armour of God upon us. We want all these things to be upon us. We want the shield. We want the, the, uh, the, the, the shield. We want the breastplate. We want the helmet of salvation. Everything we want. But that part is also on each and every one of us. Your feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The sandals of the Roman soldier often were fitted with nails or armed with spikes to make hold firm in the ground. To make the hold firm in the ground. The gospel is a firm foundation and we can hold on to it even when the ground seems uphill or slippery. While we are fighting this battle in every day of our lives, you and I have the gospel of peace fitted on our feet. So that as you climb that mountain, no matter how treacherous the road may be, you will still be upward standing. You won't be slipping off so easily because you are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. But this also means that your feet are ready to bring that gospel of peace out to where the war is. Because opposite of war is peace. You are surrounded, we are surrounded in a world where people are going through difficult times. We're surrounded in a world where everyone, if you just take time to listen to someone's story, You know, I've had the opportunity in this last couple of weeks to be able to speak to some people, new friends that I've met along the way, and so many of them have got issues. If you only take time to listen, issues of depression, issues of family, issues of marriages, and so on and so forth, so many of them have got issues. If only we can just take time and listen. You need to be ready because your feet are fitted. This is not an optional garment. It is part of the full armour of God. We want the blessings, we want the protection, we want the favour of God. We want to be able to fight against, you know, whatever the devil is coming. But this is also a part of the armour of God, that your feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That you'll be ready to go out and share this gospel of peace to those around you as well. We are in a world where many are looking for peace and hope. The world is constantly at war and struggles prevail all around us. The opposite of war is peace. Your feet are fitted. That's right. Your feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I read a story, you know, as I was preparing about this man by the name of Tom Little. Tom Little is part of the International Assistance Missions, which brings, they they are a team, a medical team that will go and bring medical supplies and hold eye clinics in uh, the remote part, the remotest village in Afghanistan. It's said in a story, Tom, he's an optometrist himself. He went on this one particular mission and they had to cross the mountains just to get to one of the villages deep inside the interior. 
They were soaked in freezing cold rain. As they reached the village, they took off their shoes. And they took off their shoes, the blisters opened. The locals all looked at their feet and started saying something in their local language. Confused, Tom and his whole team asked the translator, what are they talking about? What are they saying? Why are they mumbling over and over and over again? Do you know what these villagers were saying? They were saying, you have beautiful feet. Beautiful feet. Beautiful feet. And that was what they were repeating. The villagers had no idea what they were talking about. But how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. They were willing to go that mile, cross the mountains, cross the rivers in the rain, just to get to that village. How beautiful are their feet. I later did a little bit more study about Tom and his team. On the way back from one of their missions, they were crossing a river and they were ambushed. And all 10 of them were murdered on the spot because they were accused for proselytism, which is converting the people, and for spying. They were murdered. The story of them going to the mountain and, and, and their feet being called beautiful was shared by Tom's wife in one of the Luzon conferences. She took out the notebook of her husband that was, had spots of blood all over it because he had written it down in his journal. And she shared that. Today, I'm not saying every single one of us need to die for the gospel in this manner. No. By going to your neighbor's house, I don't think they, you will be martyred. By talking to your colleagues, giving them a little bit more time, I don't think there will be a lot of persecution. By stopping at your fishmonger a little bit longer to talk to them about how is your family, how are your daughters, how are your children, I don't think anything will happen to you. But are you willing to go that extra mile? Are you willing to step out and say, God, use me as an instrument and use me to have beautiful feet for you? Do you have beautiful feet that are willing to go? Secondly, another trait of beautiful feet is that you have a message. You have a message. How, there, how and how are they to hear without someone preaching? Romans 10, 14 says this. How are they to hear without someone preaching? Preach what? Preach what? Yeah, we are, some of us are willing to go. We're willing to go shopping. We're willing to go eat. We're willing to drive all the way to Penang for good food. Yes, you may be willing to go, but we are willing to go with a message. Each of us have a message. The beauty of the feet is not just in the going, but also in the message it bears. Vance Havner says this, We need men of the cross with the message of the cross bearing the marks of the cross. This man is another radical guy who was a preacher. He started preaching when he was 14 years old. And that's why he says we need men of the cross with the message of the cross bearing marks of the cross. Those who understand the message, those who have received the message, those who have experienced the message so true in their lives that everywhere you go, people will be able to know that message. And what is this message? The Bible says, how beautiful are the feet who bring good news or, hello, can I see this? Good news or glad tidings. Good news or glad tidings. The authorized version translates the word perfectly, saying, God's messengers are not tasked only to bring glad tidings, but to bring glad tidings of good things. They are to bring outstandingly good news, unimaginably good news, news beyond our hopes and imagination and our deepest longings. You have this message. You have this message of good news, glad tidings of good things. Wow! Isn't that exciting? 
Do you even know that you have the glad tidings of good things, this message of glad tidings of good things in your life? Hallelujah, amen. Hello, any Christians in the house? Are we all awake here? I, am I the only one excited that I have the good news? I have the good news. You have the good news. I wonder why your founders of, of our church named us Glad Tidings. I don't know. I don't know the whole story behind why Glad Tidings. Because in those days, Glad Tidings was one of the few early churches around, Assemblies of God churches around. They had Calvary. They had, they had First Assemblies of God. We could have been First Assemblies of God, Jalan Gasing. We could have. We could have been other names as well. But God destined this church to be glad tidings. You are in glad tidings because you have... Come on, let's give God the glory for that. Come on. And we, we and I need to live up to this name, glad tidings. You have a good news that's within you, not just, not, not just because you come from glad tidings. You come from any church or so you have the good news. But... Even more, glad Titus, you have the responsibility to bear this good news to all those around you. I am so glad to be in a church where people have recognized your call to be glad tidings, to have beautiful feet, to bring glad tidings to those around you. When the call was given this year, sometime a couple of weeks ago, to go and, and start again to bring, to pack your things for the food bank, so many of you, together with yourselves, went out to Tesco, went out to, 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 to Jusco, went out to, um, I can't even remember, Aeon Big, all these shops, Hero Market, to go and buy things. You went together, some of you went together, some of you bought separately and you brought it in. You spent money, you spent time, you spent, you know, the, the effort putting it together. And I say to you, how beautiful are your feet? You have no idea what your efforts meant, means to those people who are receiving it. As it was shared last year itself, 208 hampers were collected. 208 hampers and then we invited almost 400 over family members to come to be recipients. And out of the 400 members, 400 people that came, 50 people gave their lives to the Lord. Come on, let's give a hand to the Lord. Today as I walked in here, they were pushing out all the food bank bags and they were collecting and pushing it to the room to store it because this Saturday again, we're going to invite many of these family members to come again so that they will be able to receive the bags and not just receive the bags, but also receive the good news that Jesus Christ has died for them and loves them so much. Come on, you're going to believe that this Saturday there will be more salvation. Amen. And why? Because you have beautiful feet. You are a part of it. You are a part of bringing someone closer to the love of God. VBS just finished. 90 over of you volunteered, helped in one way or another. More than that, I believe, because so many were working behind the scenes months, weeks before VBS, trying to set up the caves, trying to do all these things, making the decoration outside for the registration booth alone. Every single thing was done with so much effort. And as a church, we say thank you. Thank you for being beautiful feet to the children. In one of the classes, we gave an altar call. And that altar call was to say, if you have problems in your family, you know that you know, there are issues in your family, you want to stand in the gap for your family. You come out. Children, mind you, half the class walked out in tears. You say, they don't understand what issues are, they have no problems. They do. They know what is peace, they, what, they know what is unrest. And all those were made possible because every single one of you who contributed, you have beautiful feet. You brought the gospel of peace into the lives of these children. Come on, let's give God the glory for a church that is willing to go. That's exactly Jesus' message. He came this Christmas. We are reminded that Jesus came and His message the reason for him coming 
He went to Nazareth and he opened the scroll. And he read from the portion of Isaiah, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. That is the reason why Jesus was born in the manger, so that He can come to proclaim good news to the poor. To send, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight of the blind, to set the oppressed free and proclaim freedom, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You and I have this message as well. You and I are called exactly as God has given us the authority to do it. Proclaim the good news. This is what Christmas is all about. That Jesus came. We're so thankful. That he came to proclaim the good news to each and every one of us. But each and every one of us now will have to bear this good news to all those around us. Thirdly, the third trait of having beautiful feet is knowing that you are sent with authority. Knowing that you are sent with authority. If you can just click it, the next slide, please. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? How are they to preach unless they are sent? Who sends them? Whose authority are you being sent? Whose authority? You bear the authority of the one who sent you. You bear the authority of the one who sent you. You have a marching order with heavenly authority. The Great Commission was given in Matthew 28. It says, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. You have been given that authority that comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're not just sent out by any church. You're not just sent out by any your cell leader. You're not just sent out by, by, by simply just, just going around aimlessly. You are sent with the authority that comes from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So many of us are so afraid to share. And I'm not even talking about sharing. Sharing, you know, the Bible says this, you know, John 3, 16 says, for whoever believes in it. It's not even about sharing the Bible. Sharing about your life story. Being there for someone. Talking to someone. Talking to someone and listening to them and then telling them, you know what, I, I understand what you're going through because, you know, I, I also have gone through things like this and, and God. Even the mention of God, sometimes we are so afraid. Friends, why are you afraid? This is the glad tidings of good things that you have in your life. And you have the authority to share it. Because God has sent you out with that authority. Acts 1, it says, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You have been given that authority to go to your communities. Paul asks, How shall they preach? <clears throat> The word he uses refers to a herald who does not come from his own message. He is a representative of a king, entrusted with a message from the throne. The herald thus brings the king's message to his subjects. Likewise, when you share, you bring, you bring with you God's message to those around you. It's God's message of love, of hope, of peace. You cannot offer that hope to someone else. You cannot offer that peace to someone else. You cannot say, you hope in me, la. you hope in me. You know, I'm here for you all the time. I'm here. You, you can count on me. Any moment you want to call me, I'm here. After a while, you will die. Because people will drain you. People will start talking to you and they will pour out their problems thinking that you are the saviour. You are not the saviour. But you have a message from a saviour that who loves them and who will call them his own, who will take care of them, who will not leave them nor forsake them. A God that neither sleeps nor slumbers. You need to sleep. You can't be counselling people all the day, all the night. But God neither sleeps nor slumber. And you have that message for them. Amen? You know, I, was, I had the opportunity to be in Israel just a few weeks ago. And one of the trips, one, one, of, the, one of the trips was the bus brought us to a shop that sold skin care, skin care products. Skin care products from the Dead Sea Minerals, okay? So this man okay, comes up. And uh, he brings up his tub of thing, and then he starts demonstrating, yeah? 
Never say anything and say, rah, 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 he starts talking about it. You know, it's so good. No, 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 it's so good. You know, no, no, no. Eczema can all go away. You put it here. And please remember to put it under your elbow as well. And he goes on and on. He was so passionate about this product that he had and this whole range of product that he has. You know, this range is like, this is rah, 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 rah. You, you just try it. You've got to believe it. You got to... I'm telling you, what caught my attention was this. This man spoke with such authority of that product. Or oh, his company... He spoke, he, spoke, he spoke with such authority. He spoke with so much conviction within him that this product can work. He spoke with so much passion that you just need to try it. Try it. Try it. You know, you try it. You have to believe me. It works. It really works. I've never seen or heard somebody so passionate about the product he sold. Needless to say, most of us bought something lah from the shop. Sharing Jesus is not a marketing gimmick. Don't get me wrong. But if you believe in Jesus and this glad tidings of good things, you believe that He is your Savior and He has delivered you and He has brought you out of darkness into His marvellous light and you have experienced it for yourself, that conviction, that same conviction should be able to come out when you share with that same authority that that guy had for his company selling those products, should be that authority that you and I have to share the good news of Jesus Christ to those around us. But yet, so many of us shy back. The authority has been given to you. You've experienced it for yourself. Don't save it for yourself. Share this good news. You don't even have to pay money for it. You had to pay money to buy it, okay? The products. Because Jesus has paid it all on the cross for each and every one of us. And people need to hear that. Amen? Is this making any sense to you? Church, hello? Yeah? Those at the balcony, are you still here with me? Hello? Yeah. And finally, the last trait of beautiful feet is this. This feet goes to all. A feet that goes to all. Romans 10, the earlier verses, from 10, 11 to 13 says, as Scripture says, Anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. Anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This feet are feet that goes to all without prejudice. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call on his name, the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul goes on to emphasize in the clearest way, he uses the Greek word pas or pasa, which means all. Okay? The word pas or pasa means all. He uses it four times in the verses 11 to 13, just now we just read. Sometimes the Bible versions translate the word whosoever, sometimes it's as all. But it is the same word. Whosoever believes in him, he is the Lord over all. All He is rich unto all who call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. And all means? All means? All. All. It doesn't matter whether they are young or old. It doesn't matter whether they are rich or poor. It doesn't matter where they come from, where their background is. All means all. This gospel of peace is for? For all. That's why you are saved. If God had a requirement of only those certain ones that could be saved, you and I will not be seated here. This gospel is for all. And that is why God has placed every single one of you in the different positions in your life. Some of you go to college, some of you go to work. In the places that you work in, that is your all. 
the places that I cannot reach, the places that the pastors cannot go into, your cell leaders cannot go to, God has placed you in your company for that all. All. Women who are there, wherever you go to, God has placed you. Wherever you go, God has placed you. This is your all. This one looks like, I wanted it to be doctor's boots. Boots that, the doctors, you go into your OT with your boots on. Access to places that you and that other normal people do not have access to. I don't have access to your all. Children, they are placed in your life. They are your all. You play games. You play games with your friends. You go play basketball. Some of you golf. This is all. Every single one of these, these shoes do not make your feet beautiful, friends. They do not make your feet beautiful, no matter how expensive they are. They may be Salvatore Ferragamos that cost 3,000 ringgit. They do not make your feet beautiful. The only thing that meet, make your feet beautiful are the feet that are slipped on onto these shoes that will bear the good news of Jesus Christ to the places that He has placed you in. Why do you think as a church, we try so hard? We put together things that has got every single thing we try and cover as much as we can. This leaflet is not a leaflet for you to make kacang pute or for you to fold into a box so that you can throw your bones in after you eat your bakute. You know what I'm talking about. This leaflet is an important leaflet that states... So that when you get into these places, these shoes give you access to the different places, to the different people that you can meet. And some of them may speak in Tamil, some of them may speak in Chinese, some of them may speak in, in Bahasa, some of them in English. You can be a bearer of good news to the kids, to the adults to the different language churches, deaf language speaking people, you can be a bearer of good news. This beautiful invitation will remain a beautiful invitation. Unless, and just a beautiful invitation, that's it. But it won't mean anything if you don't give it out to someone. Someone who needs to hear the gospel. Someone who needs to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for them. That Jesus Christ came on Christmas Day so that they can, they can receive eternal life. Do you believe in this gospel yourself? If you believe in this gospel yourself, you will bring this out and you will share this with someone. And you would pray so earnestly from today onwards to say, God, give me an opportunity just to pass this out to someone. You will never know. All it takes is for you to give to someone, wherever it is, whether it's in the market, in the wet market. Take some time to talk to your fishmonger, to your, to your chicken, chicken seller. You'll never know. That is the all that he was talking about. The beautiful feet that will go to all without prejudice. I want to end with this. Just now, Pastor Vincent was sharing at the <clears throat> communion table, and I thought, die, he's going to hijack my message. He's talking about the Advent season. Yeah? I'm just going a little bit, the add on a little bit further to what he has shared as well. Yes, the Advent season is a season where it's a time of preparation, a time of reflection, preparing our hearts to know that a God that loves us so much, as the Bible says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that you and I can have life. The word Adventist, as He has aptly shared, was, is from the word Adventus, which means coming, or in Greek trans translation, it's parousia, parousia. 
While Advent is definitely a time where we remember and we celebrate and in anticipation of Christ's birth, it is more than that. It is only in the shadow of the Advent that the miracle of Christmas can be fully understood and appreciated. Because the promise of Israel and the promise of, for the church of Jesus Christ that He has come, that He will come again. This is the Advent. So more than just it being a season of preparing our hearts and recognizing that Jesus came and was born in a manger and then later He died on the cross for us, we also need to recognize it's also a season for us to remember that Advent also means that Jesus is coming again soon and very soon. There will be a second coming. Come on, there will be a second coming. And in the light of this understanding that there is a second coming, you and I have the responsibility to bear the message of the cross to all those around us. Because God's desire is that none shall perish. None shall perish without knowing Him. In fact, the song, Joy to the World, that the team sung this morning, I came to, to, to know that Joy to the World is not really a Christmas song. It's not a Christmas carol. I did further studies on it. Isaac Watts, when he wrote this song, it came from Psalm 98. It was inspired to write this song from Psalm 98. And Psalm 98 is a prophetic psalm. It's a messianic psalm, psalm that talks about a saviour coming. That's why if you notice in that song, you don't see any Bethlehem, no manger, there's no star of David, nothing. There's not, not, no part of joy to the world that says that. Because the song, Joy to the World, is a song about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. As much as we celebrate Christmas with that victory in our heart, many more in the world need to know that Jesus Christ is their Saviour. Before He comes again to judge the world and to rule and reign in this world, many more need to call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. And it means all. And God has called you and I to have beautiful feet. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are your feet. How beautiful are your feet. This Christmas season, don't miss out on having the most beautiful feet that can ever bring, can bring so much joy to the Lord and to those around you. Take a picture of this so that you know what the events are. Pray and give this to someone. Invite them, trusting God that as they come, they will hear the message of hope. That there is a Saviour that loves them. and There is a Saviour that will give them peace, love and joy. How beautiful are your feet? Let's pray.